Hello and welcome to Gardening of 58 North. So in this video I'd like to show you what to do with your flaming katie after it's finished flowering, how to trim it and also how to look after it over the summer time. So flaming katie plants, you normally buy them in winter but you can buy them at any time of year. They would naturally flower in winter but uh, the way that we grow them in the nurseries we can force them to flower at any time of year that we want. But the thing to know with these plants is if the days are short, so if it's winter time and if it's slightly cooler temperatures, this will flower for the whole time. So if you were to buy this in the end of summer or autumn, it would probably flower right through till spring. And in the right conditions you can have these flowering year round as long as you don't let them have long daylight levels. So if you close the curtains early in the evening, don't open the curtains till late in the morning, this could flower year round. And if that's combined with cooler temperatures, temperatures generally below 20 degrees Celsius. What will probably happen in most houses is you'll be having it around 20 degrees Celsius or above because that's the average house temperature and summer time will come, the days will get longer and your calico will start looking like this. The flowers will stop, uh, it will stop producing new flowers and you'll have lots of new growth coming out and the growth will just be leaves and stems. And so this is just to show what to do at this stage. So first of all you want to remove all the old flowers, they're just going to take up space, they're going to shade the leaves, not let light get in and just give it a messy appearance. So I'm just going to go ahead now and trim all the flowers off. Now when it comes to cutting the flowers it's important to know where to cut them. So with most flowers what they should do is they'll come out from the main stem in between the leaf and the main stem but you'll notice that they'll have uh, quite long uh, stems themselves and some of them even have leaves, some small leaves like this one. This one here for example has a couple of, of small leaves. You want to cut them back from where they come on the main stem so it's a little bit tricky to sew with this one because it's growing quite uh, quite strongly but basically if there's no small little uh, leaves on them just cut them right down to the bottom if they have a couple of small leaves before the flower I would just cut off the first two leaves just to make it a bit more compact you can cut them off just above the first two leaves but um, generally you get a slightly leggier plant so I like to cut them just a little bit lower down so just using a pair of scissors or secateurs you can just cut them like that there you can see there and the only other thing is the um, the sap can be a little bit can be quite toxic on these, so make sure you wash your hands or wear gloves if you get any sap on you, and um, and keep it away from pets as well because these are supposed to be quite toxic for pets. So one of the things you might need to do periodically with this plant is to dust the leaves. You can probably see in this one there's quite a bit of dust starting to build up in the leaf, and I'll just show you a close up now and see what that looks like. So you can see there, there's quite a bit of dust building up. All you want to do is get a damp cloth or a tissue and just wipe that off. Make sure that the, um, the shoots stay nice and clean. And it also gives it a nicer glossy appearance. So just like that, wipe them off. Either a damp cloth or say, a, a tissue, just gently wipe them. And uh, it keeps the, the dust off them. And the dust also can cause issues with uh, blocking out the light levels if it gets quite thick and it doesn't allow the plant to have as much air get flow getting to it so a quick wipe every now and again is important with calinkos they don't collect dust as badly as some plants like rubber plants but because the leaves are quite long lived they will eventually get dusty so you just want to give them a, a gentle dusting they are incredibly fragile leaves though so when you do this you do need to be very careful that you don't damage the leaves um, they are very fragile you can also rinse this in water but being a succulent I would advise against that because you might introduce some rot issues so when it comes to the new growth, if they're starting to grow early in the year, the new growth can often be quite leggy, especially if they haven't had enough light. And what you'll get is these long, long, thin stems, and they'll have very small leaves. What you're wanting is shorter stems with much larger leaves. If you are hours to let this grow, even if I put it into brighter growing conditions, what would happen is this stem would continue getting longer and it would just flop down and look quite messy, because this stem's not strong enough to support any of the new growth. If I was to put this in a very sunny location, the new leaves might be larger and bigger, but all that extra growth would still not be supported by the stem. So if you do have any particularly long stems like this, I would just cut them off. And with these, I would cut them back to probably the first set of leaves that you see on them before they join the main stem, because it's at the first set of leaves is where the, the new shoots will come out. So on this one, for example, I'm just going to cut it here. And then we should get a couple of new shoots appearing just next to the old leaves and uh, this should be a much more compact growth if, as long as they keep it in higher light levels. 
And pruning it in this way will also encourage a more compact bushy plant as well, which is something that most people want to go for because it's, it takes up less space and it looks a bit nicer. So now you, you've trimmed it, you want to be thinking about the growing conditions it's going to be growing in, but also what kind of final size you'd like the plant to be. Unlike a lot of house plants, this, the flowering isn't dependent on the size of it, so it doesn't matter if it's a big plant or a small plant, it should still flower as long as it gets a dark period with cooler temperatures. So just think how big you want your plant to be. If you want it to be a small plant, uh, repot it less often, keep it in a smaller pot, keep it well trimmed, uh, pruning it regularly and you'll just have a smaller plant which will still flower nicely in autumn and winter. If you want a, a larger plant these can grow quite big, probably two or three foot maximum and if you give them the right conditions they can actually grow quite fast as well. So for a larger plant what you want to do is repot it into a larger pot you want to give it plenty of space, as much light as possible, and you also want to feed it regularly. I would feed it with a regular houseplant feed. They tend to be slightly higher in nitrogen. The higher nitrogen levels encourages lots of larger leaves, rapid growth as well. And then when it comes to autumn, you want to then switch to a tomato feed, and that will just help it with the flowering. If you give it a tomato feed over the summer, it'll tend to make the plant a little bit shorter and the leaves a little bit smaller, which can be beneficial. It just depends on what you're going for with your plant. If you want a bigger plant with nice big succulent leaves or if you want a smaller, more compact plant. I quite like the giant leaves on the Kalenko. You can see some of them can get really quite large. It's quite a big one down here. So I'll be uh, wanting some giant leaves on this one. So I'm going to be giving it a high nitrogen feed. And I'll probably also repot this in a few weeks as well, just to boost it get a really nice big plant because I quite like a large calico. But as I say, it just depends on if you want a big plant or a small one. Now when it comes to growing it in the summer, these are succulent plants but they they come from mountainous regions of Madagascar so they're, they're quite used to high rainfall levels in the summer and they're not used to very hot temperatures either. So don't treat this like a lot of succulents and cacti giving them maximum light, maximum heat. These will want to be sheltered from the midday sun in summer. They can have midday sun throughout the rest of the year but it, during the summer months uh, give this a little bit of shade in the middle of the day because it will be too bright for it. So morning and afternoon su uh, sun is, is perfect. But give this as much light as possible as long as you're avoiding that midday sun. I'm in Scotland, we have quite weak sunlight levels so I'll probably give this midday sun in the summertime. But anywhere further south than, than uh, Scotland or the UK I would avoid the midday sun because you can get a little bit of scorch on the leaves. And they are surprisingly thirsty for succulent plants. Because I can't specify how often your plant will need watering, what you want to do is check it with yourself, either by the weight of it or checking how damp the compost feels. The problem with checking the weight of it is it's a succulent plant, so the plant, the, the plant itself weighs quite a lot. But what you want to make sure is the top centimetre or two of the soil dries out completely in between watering. Although this is a, a plant that is used to higher rainfall levels in the summertime, it still needs, it's still a succulent so it still needs to dry out very slightly in between waterings. If this is kept constantly damp there is a risk of root rot. And when it comes to winter period when it's flowering you want to definitely treat this like a succulent or a cactus. You want to water it quite sparingly and only when the compost is completely dried out. Otherwise it will rot over the winter months. So as I say for the summer months plenty of light, plenty of feed and quite a lot of water considering it's a succulent. This should put on some quite rapid growth and um, get to a decent size. Then come autumn time you want to be thinking about encouraging it to flower. As the days become shorter this will naturally start flowering and you can just want to reduce the water slightly, turn to a tomato feed and it should produce flowers over winter. So the final thing I'll talk about is the temperature. Because these come from mountainous regions they don't need high temperatures in the summertime. 20 to 25 is perfect for them in summer. Anything above 25 degrees is going to be a bit hot and they might start suffering, especially if they're in the sun in that temperature. They might start to wilt. The leaves might get scorched. In the winter time, you want to keep them around about 15 to 20 degrees, so just a bit cooler. But if you keep them 20 degrees year round, they're not going to be too fussed. They're not too fussy about temperature. As long as it's not very cold and it's not very hot, they should be fine in a normal household environment. And when it comes to light levels in winter, you want to keep it as bright as possible, give it that midday sun. The sun tends to be quite weak in winter unless you're in the tropics, so it needs that high light levels just, to, just for it to do well. Because um, Madagascar's not too far from the equator, it's a subtropical climate, and in the mountains it's dry over the winter time, so it gets plenty of sunlight in the winter, so give this as much as you can, and that should help with the, the flowering display. And just keep regular deadheading as well removing the old flowers that will encourage it to continue flowering and as long as the, the days aren't too long and the temperatures are cool it should flower non-stop. So that's all for this video I'm going to uh, set this up now put it in a sunnier position feed it a high nitrogen feed 
and possibly repot it as well and then I'll show you the results at the end of the video and you should see that it has put on some quite nice strong growth. So it's now just two months later and as you can see the plant is about three or four times the size it was just two months ago in the earlier part of the video. So I've basically just had this in the highlight environment, temperatures around 20 to 25 degrees and uh, I've put it into a larger pot as you can see here and I've also been feeding it a high nitrogen feed probably about every two weeks or once a week. So I haven't been feeding it a huge amount um, but it's been enough with the highlight levels to grow quite well. And this is just an example of how fast it can grow and what the new growth should look like as it returns. Now I'll just give a couple of tips about the new growth as it, as it comes in and if it's not looking right I can tell you why it might be looking like that. So if you have a very high light environment like I had mine under what you should find is the plant naturally branches a lot. So you can see here the new shoots have come up and then they've started to put on lots of side branches. This is what you'd expect with high light levels. If there isn't lots of side branches and the growth is getting very tall and leggy, you don't have enough light, what you need to do is either bring it to a lighter location or keep uh, cutting back the top of it to encourage it to branch more and be a more bushy plant. And if the light levels are too high, what you might find is the leaves might start going yellow and they don't have this nice dark glossy green colour to them. So that's about it from this video. I can now decide um, with my plant if I want to keep growing it. So I can either let it get into a really big plant, as I say it can easily grow to 3 foot in height. And then, um, and then I can decide to let it flower then. Or if I wanted to now, I could start putting it in a location where it gets cooler temperatures and a shorter day length and I can start it flowering now. I'll probably get this to grow a little bit further. I've given it quite a large pot so it can certainly at least double in size before it needs free potting. I want to get a really nice big plant with good showy flowers. And when it comes to flowering, um, make sure it is, has got plenty of branches. The more branches it has, the more flowers it has. Although each bunch of flowers will be slightly smaller. If you just have one big stem, you'll have one big lump of flowers, but it won't look quite as showy. The best thing is when you have lots of little branches like this, and then it comes into flower, you can get the whole thing covered in flowers, and you can almost not see the leaves because there's so many flowers on it. So that's all from this video. I might make some more videos in the future if anyone's interested in how to propagate these or possibly if there's any other kind of questions like repotting or soil type.